going on guys in this video we are going to see how to find unknown voltages using nodal analysis method so if you notice here we have a voltage source so when we have a voltage source in when we do the nodal analysis method what we have to do is we have to take this one as super node so to take super node if we take so before I do that let's put the voltages first so first uh, we have to set the bottom part of the ground and that's going to be zero voltage and this is let's call this one v1 v2 and v3 right and when we have voltage source what we do is we take this whole thing as a super node so if we take this as super node then what we have to do is we have to use curve of current law to this super node so if we have to see what are the currents entering this one and uh, what are the current exiting this one and equalize both right entering must be equal to exiting that's the catch of current law right now here we have three ampere ampere is entering so this is going to be three is equal to and uh, this is entering and wherever we don't have current we consider that one as exiting so this one we consider exiting right so this one is exiting and this one is also exiting and this one also exiting right now let's create the equation for this one this is going to be v1 minus v2 v1 minus v2 divided by the resistance in between that's going to be 2 and this one also exiting this is v3 minus v2 divided by 1 and also this one also is exiting this is v3 minus 0 divided by 3 so plus v3 minus 0 divided by 3 and uh, we have created for this one this one this one and this one is 3 so now we have created this equation now let's try to simplify this one so to simplify what we can do is first of all we can take the common denominator for this one that's going to be 6 and if I take 6 as my common denominator this is going to be 3 times v1 minus 3v2 and this is going to be 6v3 minus 6v2 and this is going to be 2 plus 2v3 right now we have this one that's equal to 3 and if I take this 6 to the other side that's going to be 18 is equal to 3v1 and we don't have any other v1 so this is going to be just 3v1 and the second one we have minus 3v2 and here we have minus 6v2 so minus 3 minus 6 that's going to be minus 9v2 and here we have 6v3 2v3 that's going to be 8v3 so we have 8v3 right here that is equal to 18 now we have one equation so let's call this one equation 1 and to create another equation what we can do is here if you notice the voltage source is here but before I go for this one if you look at this one here we have Vx and plus minus sign so plus represents higher potential minus represents the lower potential so if we subtract higher potence, uh, lower potential from higher potential so that's going to be v2 minus v1 that should be equal to this one vx right actually this is 0 so v2 minus 0 is equal to vx so from this one we know that v2 is equal to vx right so if v2 is equal to vx this voltage right here that is equal to 5 v2 right so this voltage is we can write this one as 5 v2 because we know that vx is equal to v2 so if this is 5v2 we can create another equation that is here we have plus right here so that's higher potential minus right here lower potential so higher potential is v1 minus lower potential that is v3 should be equal to 5v2 so let's call this one second equation but let's uh, rearrange this v variables in one side and equate that one to zero so this is going to be v1 minus 5v2 minus 5v2 minus v3 is equal to 0 so let's call this one our second equation 
Now we need one more equation, right? Since we have three unknown variables, we have to solve a three by three matrix. So we need one more equation. So what we can do is take this second knot, right? And create an equation. So again, we are going to use Kirchhoff current law, or you can say Kirchhoff voltage law. So addition of all the voltage should be equal to zero, or addition of all the currents should be equal to zero. So here, whenever we don't have the currents or direction, we always assume it's leaving this one. So we assume this is leaving, this is leaving, this is leaving, right? So first, uh, let's start with this one. V2 minus V1 over 2. And then V2 minus V3 plus V2 minus V3 over 1. And this is going to be V2 minus 0 over 4. So this is going to be just V2 over 4, right? That should be equal to 0. Now to simplify this one, we can take uh, 4 as our common denominator. And in the top, we are going to have 2V2 minus 2V1. And the other one is going to be 4V2 minus 4V3 plus V2 is equal to 0. And if I bring the 4 to the other side, this is going to be 0. Like 4 times 0, that's going to be 0. So this is the only thing that's going to remain. Let's add them together. So we have minus 2V2, I mean V1. And V2, we have 2V2, 4V2, 6V2, 6V2 plus 1V2, that's going to be 7V2, 7V2, and we have minus 4V3, so minus 4V3 is equal to 0. Now we can go ahead and create our matrix. So let's create a matrix right here. So first column. We have this equation. Let's start with the first one, right? V1 is the first column, V2 in the second column, V3 in the third column, and after that we equate this one to these numbers after the equal sign. So first V1 is we have 3 in the first equation, and V2 is minus 9, and V3 is 8, actually 8 here, that's 8. And in the second equation we have V1 that is 1, and V2 is minus 5, V3 is negative 1, and in the third equation we have v1 is minus 2, v2 is 7, and v3 is negative 4. And this is going to be v1, v2, v3. And after equal sign, we have, in the first equation, we have 18. And in the second equation, we have 0. And in third equation, we have 0. Right? So here we have to use Cramer's rule. And if you solve this one using Cramer's rule, you will get v1 is equal to 162, v2 is equal to 36, and v3 is going to be equal to negative 18. And that's how we do this kind of problems. I hope you guys find this video helpful. See you next time.